On March 28 of the 58 BC year, a combined group of Gallic tribes known as the Helvedi launched the beginning of a mass migration. This conglomeration was made up of smaller tribes from the Verbageni, Rauraki, Vindaliki, Briganti, Latabrigi, Tujani, and even the Tigarini tribe who, having originally become part of the mass migration of Kimbri and Teutones which had launched the career of Gaius Marius, had ultimately settled with the other tribes on what is known today as the Swiss Plateau. Unfortunately, the expansion of German tribes to their north made the Helvedi lands, sandwiched between the Rhine and Rhone rivers, and blocked by mountains, an extremely vulnerable location. And so, burning all of their homes and stores, so there would be no reason to give up and turn back the moment the expedition got difficult, the Helvedi began their migration. Their choices were to either go north, through the mountain passes, which would lead them into the lands of the Adui, and which was a difficult journey, or to take the easier route of passing through Roman Transalpine Gaul, and into the lands of the Adui. Planning to negotiate passage through Roman territory, the Helvedi chose the easier route. Caesar, who during his consulship of 59 BC, had managed to secure for himself the governance of Transalpine Gaul, along with Cisalpine Gaul and Illyricum, had four veteran legions at his disposal. The Legios 7, 8, 9, and 10 had all fought under Caesar in Hispania, conquering Lusitania, and winning for Caesar the triumph which had been manipulated away from him by Senate conservatives, led by Cato. When the Adui sent word to Caesar, who was still in Rome, that the Helvedi were coming, Caesar began the levying of two new legions. He then took the 10th legion, which he had created in Hispania, and marched towards the Adui, near modern-day Geneva. Caesar and the 10th legion arrived before the Helvedi. Crossing over the Rhone River, Caesar ordered the bridge destroyed behind him to block the Helvedi's passage from the plateau into Transalpine Gaul. Sending envoys to Caesar, the Helvedi petitioned him for safe passage through Rome's Gallic territory, promising to travel across non-violently. Caesar responded that he would consider the matter, consult with the Senate, and give them his answer in due time. But Caesar knew his history. In 107 BC, when Caesar's uncle had been elected to the first of his seven consulships, the Cimbri and Teutones made a similar request of the then co-consul, Gaius Cassius Longinus. But Longinus had taken too long to consider his answer, and the Germans grew impatient. They attacked, slaughtering most of his army, then forced those who remained to pass beneath the yoke. It was at that battle, that the great-grandfather of Caesar's wife, Calpurnia, lost his life. Additionally, the leader who had been responsible for the deaths of Longinus and Calpurnius Piso, 49 years earlier, was a young man named Divico. This same Divico, now an old man leading another mass migration, was making the same request of Caesar. After 15 days, Caesar summoned the envoys, though he did not need to give them his answer. When the envoys arrived, they saw that Caesar had fortified the river bank with five meter high walls, that stretched for a distance of 20 miles. Caesar's answer was no. The Helvedi made a few feeble attempts to attack the wall, but since it was on the opposite side of the Rhone River, they could only attack in small boats, which made them easy targets for Caesar's javelin throwers. With Transalpine Gaul closed to them, the Helvedi were forced to go north, around Roman territory, to reach the lands of the Adui. This route took them all the way back to where they had started, forcing them to pass through the mountains, giving Caesar time to gather the rest of his forces. Leaving his legate, Titus Labienus, in charge of fortifications at Geneva, Caesar raced back to Italy. There, he ordered the Legios 7, 8, and 9, out of their winter camp in Cisalpine Gaul, and also took command of the two new legions he had just levied near Rome. With approximately 30,000 troops, Caesar began his march back to Geneva to rejoin Titus Labienus. The Helvedi, forced to endure the long and difficult trek through the mountains, arrived in Adui lands north of Geneva, and well out of Roman territory, into what was considered by the Romans as the territories of Free Gaul. And even though Titus Labienus could have easily intercepted the Helvedi coming out of the mountains, he remained in Roman Gaul, at Geneva. Once out of the mountains, the Helvedi began raising villages to the ground, and plundering the land. Gaul's free tribes, those positioned in the path of the oncoming Helvedi, 
sent urgent requests for Caesar to intervene. After rejoining Titus Labienus, Caesar marched his legions into free Gaul, and began his pursuit of the Helvedi. Caesar caught up with them at the river Son, where the Helvedi were in the process of crossing. Because their numbers, which included women, children, and the elderly, exceeded 350,000, they had already spent approximately 20 days crossing the Son River in small boats and rafts. With the majority of the Helvedi already across the Son River, Caesar's army fell on those who were still waiting to cross. Some managed to escape into the nearby forest, but the rest were slaughtered by the Romans. Caesar then ordered the building of a pontoon bridge. On the following day, Caesar's 30,000 troops traversed the river that had taken the Helvedi 20 days to navigate. Caesar pursued the Helvedi from a safe distance while he simultaneously searched for an advantageous spot to initiate battle. During this time, Caesar's cavalry engaged the Helvedi cavalry in minor skirmishes, but nothing which required the formation of battle lines. After discovering an ideal battle position, Caesar set up camp. Behind the Helvedi was a hill which Caesar meant to use to his advantage. Giving Titus Labienus two of his veteran legions, he instructed the legate to march silently around during the night, take the hill, and remain out of sight. The next day, when Caesar engaged the Helvedi, Labienus was to charge down the hill, and attack from the rear. However, Labienus hid his troops so well behind the hill, that Caesar's scouts, unable to locate him, thought they had fallen to the Helvedi. Without knowing what happened to Labienus, Caesar, whose remaining four legions were 50% raw recruits, dared not attack. By dusk Caesar learned that Labienus and his two veteran legions were still waiting behind the hill, but the day was gone. Caesar was forced to abandon the plan. Although Caesar's 30,000 men easily crossed the pontoon bridge they constructed at the Son River, the army's supply train could not cross that way. Caesar, who was running low on rations, turned toward Bibracta, a town in free Gaul allied with Rome. The loyal Gauls had repeatedly promised Caesar supplies from Bibracta, yet they were constantly delayed. Caesar decided to stop waiting, and with his army, go and get them himself. As he marched toward Bibracta, the Helvedi followed. When the Helvedi attacked the rear of his army, Caesar deployed his cavalry to hold the Helvedi off while he took up a strategic position atop a nearby hill. Caesar positioned his six legions with the four strongest in the front, and the two legions of raw recruits at the top of the hill. When the Helvedi broke through Caesar's cavalry, they faced an uphill battle against Roman veteran legions. To get the Helvedi to drop their shields, Caesar's front line showered the Helvedi with javelins. With spears sticking out of their shields, they were now too heavy to hold, and too cumbersome to wield. The Helvedi dropped their shields, loosening their tightly packed formation, which gave the Romans an opening to charge down the hill. As the fighting continued throughout the day, the Romans slowly pushed the Helvedi back, and against the hills where their own supplies were held. As the Romans pressed their advantage, backing the Helvedi further up the hill, two other Gallic tribes suddenly joined the battle. The Boii and the Chulingi tribes, equaling approximately 15,000 additional Gauls, attempted to outmaneuver the Romans by descending on Caesar's right flank. Finally, Caesar's raw recruits were given their first chance at battle, as Caesar commanded them to turn their backs around and face the oncoming challenges. Hour after hour passed while Caesar's legions fought on two fronts, his veterans facing the front line, his raw recruits facing the back. Finally, Caesar's forces broke through, scattering the Helvedi. As Caesar's forces moved in to take the Helvedi's camp, and the desperately needed supply wagons, the Boii and Chulingi fell back to protect the supplies. The battle over the supply train lasted several more hours until, finally, Caesar's legions were victorious. The fighting had gone on for nearly 12 hours, and when it was done, Caesar had lost approximately 5,000 men. The Helvedi lost approximately 50,000 men, which represented about half of their population of fighting men. For the next three days, Caesar buried his dead and tended his wounded, before he was able to resume his march. As soon as Caesar was ready to pursue the remaining Helvedi, envoys arrived, offering Divico's formal surrender. 
of the more than 350,000 Helvedi that set out from the Swiss plateau, Divico now only had approximately 110,000 left. He wanted no more battle against Rome, or Caesar. Caesar accepted his surrender, and ordered the Helvedi to return to their home. Rome feared that the Germans would take over the plateau in the absence of the Gauls, and much preferred the Helvedi to the Germans as a neighbor. While resting in Bibracta, Caesar was visited by a delegation of tribal leaders from Free Gaul. As the head of Aedui's government, a druid by the name of Divisicus was chosen to represent the entire delegation. Speaking on behalf of the other tribes, Divisicus congratulated Caesar on his victory over the migrating Helvedi, while simultaneously thanking him for his service to the Aedui. Then Divisicus broached the real reason for the visit. The leaders of Free Gaul were concerned. The Helvedi had begun their emigration as the result of a surge of German migration into Gallic territories. This surge was being overseen by a German chieftain who used his strength in numbers to flood Gaul with more Germanic tribes, while demanding tribute and land. Divisicus and his delegation sought Caesar's help because they were in a bind. The chieftain who was taking their lands and swarming them with Germans, in what appeared to be the first step in an all-out German invasion of Gaul, held the legal status of friend and ally of the Roman people. His name was Ariovistus, and it was because of Caesar that Ariovistus had been granted this advantageous title.